Hey guys, I'm back with part two of the previous video. This is part two of my erotic ventures. Yes. So, let me backtrack. I'm sure you guys have not read <clears throat> my old blog. I have an old blog where I kind of discussed this. This is a long ass story, but I'm going to make it short. I'm going to make it short as possible. I have an alter ego. I guess that's what you should call her. Yes, I have an alter ego. Her name is Jenny. Now, I came up with Jenny years ago when I was in Brooklyn. Back when I lived in Brooklyn, New York. I was about maybe eight or nine years old. I remember I was in about fourth grade. And um, my parents wanted to reward me for doing good in school. So we stopped by this thrift store in Queens, I believe. There was some new thrift store we'd never been to. Um, in Queens, it was close to my mom's job, and we just want to stop in there, you know, just for the hell of it. So, we stop in there, and I go in there with my mom, and I found this gorgeous, gorgeous Indian doll. Um, it was a soft doll, like, she was gorgeous, she had a gorgeous brown face, gorgeous jet black long pigtails, she had the Indian headband, you know how they have the Indians. You know, Native American dress, you know, the outfit, the moccasins with the little fringes on the bottom. It was the most gorgeous doll I'd ever seen, you know. And that really resonated with me for some reason. Probably because I have Native American in me, you know. So, I was in love with the doll, so my mom bought it for me. It was brand new. I remember it was like a, pl it was in like this clear plastic bag. I don't remember the brand name or anything. It was probably just an off-brand thing, but the called doll was gorgeous. It was very soft and cute. I was in love. I saw her and I was in love. So we bought the doll. I named her Jenny. The reason why is because I had a cousin named Jennifer. And she was like my favorite cousin at the time. Or like one of my best friends. So I just named her Jenny. Because I just like the nickname Jenny. And that was where my alter ego was born. That was how I came up with my main erotic character, that doll. <laughs> and I was very weird because I told you I've always been sexual as a child. I was doing weird things with that doll. I was like, there were times I used to like, oh, kiss on her and stuff, you know. I always slept with the doll because, you know, I'm a kid and I like sleeping with dolls. I always have a doll with me when I go to sleep or stuff down. <sighs> so I was like weirdly attracted to this doll and I used to do some weird stuff with her. Yeah, this is very weird for me putting it out there, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm being honest, and this is like, these are like personal things that are coming up, and I think some of these things I forgot about until I went back and looked about, looked at it, thought about it, you know, all of that. So that's how I came up with Jenny. Jenny is the name of my erotic character, or alter ego, my main character. Basically, Jenny, her personality is opposite of me. Or, like, I guess my other side, my evil side, I guess. Jenny's like the evil side of me, you know. She is a loud, ghetto, rich, overly sexual being. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know why when I first made her, I made her five years old. I don't know why. I guess that was just me being a kid, portraying. Jenny as a kid, even though she was being sexual, which made no sense. You know, I used to call her Jenny, five-year-old freak. But that made no sense, of course, as I got older and I started, like, writing a story. And I was like, what the hell? But, of course, she wasn't really five. She was just, in my mind, I was thinking she was five for some dumb reason. But anyway, that's how she came about. So I have an alter ego. And for years, I was just, you know hanging on to that doll and having dreams about her. I don't know what happened to the doll. I think, think she broke apart or something. And my mom made me throw it away. She probably fell apart and I was very upset. I remember when we moved to Georgia, I believe. That was the last time I saw that Jenny doll. I wasn't very happy, you know, because that was like my prized possession. You know, Jenny was me. So, um, fast forward to how Jenny came in. I was writing my stories. Like I said, I was just, I have a wild imagination, y'all. I guess I was making up all this stuff in my head. Um, I have an obsession with mansions. I've said that before. Don't know why. Again, probably from my past life. 
I have an obsession with mansions. So Jenny, the character, lived in a mansion. She was rich. She was balling. Her parents had money. Um, she had an older brother. Um, they were in the music business. You know, kind of like an empire story. Um, her father owned music business. He didn't start off rich. He was very poor from the get-go. Worked his way up to being a billionaire. And there he is as a billionaire. And Jenny is his spawn. And Jenny is a little spoiled brat. You know, but she's sexy as hell. She can get any guy she wants. She wants to get any guy she wants. She has a lifetime boyfriend named Fudgy. <laughs> Don't ask. He doesn't have a real name. That's what I named him when I was young. I named him Fudgy because if you guys were readers as a child, you remember Judy Bloom. I think it was Judy Bloom. The author who wrote um, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. And she also wrote... Uh, it was another book with, with the little boy named Fudge. I was obsessed with that little story. The, the boy who had a little brother. Mischievous little brother. And his name was Fudge. <laughs> and sometimes they call him Fudge. He was a brat. You know, but I don't know. I was always into that stuff. Because I was such a bookworm as a child. And I constantly read stories about bad kids. Big families and bad kids. That's what the stories were about. And those types of stories I love reading. So again, I think it was Judy Bloom, where she wrote Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing, and this other one, I think it was called Fudge or Mania or something like that. Something with fudge in it. <laughs> I don't remember, but, you know, that was, that was my childhood. I took the name Fudgy because I thought it was so cute, and Fudgy is Jenny's longtime boyfriend, or childhood friend turned boyfriend, you know what I mean? So they've been dating for a long time. <laughs> Oh, you know, they were children. Now, yeah, I made Jenny grown up now, but at the time she was a child. And I was sneaking to have sex. I was getting in trouble at school trying to have sex with little boys who didn't know anything about sex. And that's just what she was. That's how she was. And her parents didn't do a damn thing about it because, again, she was a brat. These are billionaires. They don't have time to watch her. They just let her do damn near anything, you know? So, yeah, that's a. A rough overview of my Jenny character. She's wild, you know, and she is the forefront of my stories. She's the forefront of my Jenny stories, and she's going to continue being the forefront of my Jenny stories. A few years back, I was trying to revive that because, you know, my husband, he was telling me I really should, and, you know, just because of the fact that I miss it, and it's me, you know, that Jenny's a part of me, and that erotic writing is a part of me. And he was encouraging me to start back doing it. And I did. But I fell off again. <laughs> I fell off again because, you know, there's a lot that goes with it. And, you know, sometimes I'm still a, still a tad bit afraid of being judged, you know, for writing this stuff. I'm still a tad bit afraid of being judged and being overly hit on. And, you know, all the other weird stuff that comes with being a freak online, I guess. You know, I don't want to call, cause that type of attention to myself, but I'm going to have a choice. You know, that's my genre, and I keep feeling sad when I put it down. And then after I put it down, I don't have anything else better to write besides my poetry. That's the only thing I feel like I want to write. I'm very good at writing about sex. So it's like, what am I waiting on? You know, I've always been good at writing about sex. When I wrote this Jenny story and it busted all, it busted wide open in high school. I was showing everybody. I remember I was in high school. If you guys remember me from high school, some of y'all miraculously watching, then hey. <laughs> if you remember, I used to write, I had a bunch of notebooks, little spiral notebooks. That's why I used to write my stories and it was a series. It was like Jenny, Five Year Old Freak, a series, book one, book two, book three, so, so on and so forth. And, it, and all those little notebooks were filled and I kept filling them. And um, people really enjoyed reading my stories. It was awesome. You know, I would, <laughs> this is crazy because somehow um, I didn't lose these books and nobody stole them. But I used to let people in my class read those Jenny books. Like if I, you know, you know how, in high, how it is in high school, you switch classes. And it would be like a couple people from each class would be like, oh yeah, did you write any more? Did you write any more from last night? What's Jenny up to now? So I would hand them the book and I would be, I would be making sure like, yeah, don't. Make sure you don't take that, give it back to me at the end of class. I'll be watching like a hawk. Because y'all know that's my prized stuff. I didn't let anybody walk away with it. Unlike what happened in college when somebody purposely stole it. <clears throat> so, 
So yeah, I um, I kept my eyes out on that. But people would literally like want to read my stuff, and I was very popular for that. I was really popular in the public. I mean, the public school, high school, because of my erotic stories. And you know, teenagers always read about sex anyway. Half teenagers in there already having sex, so they didn't care. They didn't want to read about it. And yeah, I was a little popular because, you know, at first I was a geek. I didn't get any attention or anything. I wasn't dressing the best because my mom was super strict. She used to pick up my clothes for me and I looked a hot mess. I was not allowed to get a perm or nothing. I was just looking a hot ratchet mess at first. <laughs> but me writing those stories kind of gave me a lot of popularity. You know, in a way I was like, it was like I was crying out for help because I was being molested. It's like I was crying out for help, but at the same time I was really expressing myself, you know. And that's what I went through with those books. So it was like a mix of all that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's um, that's how my high school life was going with the Jenny stories. They blew up. They were very popular. I had plenty of people reading them. They kept telling me to keep writing them, keep going, keep pushing. And you know, I did what I could until you know my life just fell apart after that. Completely fell apart. Um, I failed out of 11th grade and I couldn't go to um, 12th grade with my class, you know, I had to go to a whole nother school, being practically homeschooled for my senior year, and I lost contact with all the people that were, were cheering me on. I lost contact with all those people, unfortunately. Now, yeah, some of them I can find online now, but you know, it's not the same now. <laughs> you know, I didn't have any friends still, period, point blank. So, yeah, the, those erotic stories got me really popular. And it's not like I was trying to be popular, it just happened, you know. There were a couple other things that made me popular. There was another thing. I was very much in love with this one little boy. I called him little boy because he was short. He was very short in high school. I don't know why I was in love with him, but I had a huge crush on this guy in high school. And I obsessed over him endlessly. Everybody knew it. That was another thing that made me kind of popular. Everybody knew I was in love with him. I don't know why I was in love with his ass because he paid me no damn attention. I bet you would now, though. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, um, he didn't pay me no damn attention. So, yeah, I was popular because of that and for another reason. It was another reason I was kind of popular in high school. Well, again, my mom didn't let me wear the best of clothes at first, but during 10th grade, she started letting me pick my own clothes. She started letting me wear name brands because... Her and her friend at the time were trying to like start a clothing business. They were trying to do a clothing business along with the school she had. So um, she would bring back, she was bringing back um some clothes from New York that were like cheaper, you know, because you know in New York you can get things for a huge bargain along the street. And she would just, they would go and come back with a bunch of wonderful name brand clothes. And I was so happy because I was oh shit, I could finally wear my own stuff. I could finally wear name brand clothes. I could finally be cool, yo. And this is the time when you know all the good stuff is out. You know, you got Tommy Hilfiger, you got Fubu, you got uh, Baby Fat, you got Carl Kanai, you got uh, 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 shit, it was so much Fat Farm. There were so many cool name brands out, th out there at the time. Y'all know, y'all remember when that stuff was popular. If y'all were around my age, y'all know. Um, and that stuff was popular and it was awesome. That was the first time I got to have a little identity where I didn't look like a damn geek so much. I didn't look as geeky, you know. I had good clothes. I had good looking clothes. I wasn't wearing like old lady looking thrift clothes, like granny church clothes anymore. <laughs> so my mom made me wear these weird things, like these weird vests and these big old fat pants. And I'm like, I didn't like that stuff she chose for me. It's ugly grandma sweater and that shit. I'm so glad that ended around 10th grade. All that ended and I finally started picking my own clothes and dressing like a decent teenager. You know, I had all the name brand shit. Hell, she even bought some Gucci stuff back. My mom bought some Gucci. Yo, it, it probably wasn't real, you know. One like that shit was not real, but just the fact that I had it though. She sent me to school with, um, I had a Gucci hat. You know, I had the Gucci print on it and a matching purse. There's the hat, the purse, and what else? Could have sworn something else, but it was just a hat and purse. Yeah, I had a Gucci hat and purse. And y'all, I swear it looked real. Like, 
You know how you, you can look at stuff, like neighbor and stuff, and you can't tell if it's real or not? Yo, know, this shit looked real. And to high schoolers, yeah, everybody thought it was real. So, you know, I'm gonna ride that. Everybody thought it was real. Like, oh my god, y'all must have money. And I told them I didn't have money. It was like, mm -hmm. I'm not rich, I'm just a regular borderline middle class family. I say borderline because it was borderline. <laughs> It was still actually fucking poor, but I looked like I had money for the first time. Oh, I'm wearing the name brand clothes. I had a lot of name brand clothes. I remember just, I remember the outfits I used to wear and I would get praised. And all the girls would be like, ooh, I want some of your outfits. You know, where did you get those from? Keep wearing them cute outfits. And that was the first time I got recognition for looking cute. And like I said, when I had the Gucci stuff, it was on. Then I, I had a Gucci obsession after that, you know? <laughs> After having the, the, the hat and the purse, I used to wear it at the school a lot. Like the Gucci purse was my favorite. You know, I had people asking to wear my hat. I had people like trying to steal my hat, I remember. I would be sitting in the lunchroom in the morning with people coming in off their bus and whatnot. And everybody wanted my damn Gucci hat. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was interesting and, and flattering, you know. I don't know how I, made, I was able to make myself stand out. Just by wearing that stuff, I actually had a little bit of a presence, and you know that combined with you know the boy I was in love with, combined my erotic stories and combined with the name brand clothes that, I, that my mom so graciously let me wear, I was a big hit in that school that year and the next year. Yeah, I'd say for the next two years I was there, I was, I was a pretty big hit. A lot of people knew me. I just wasn't, I wasn't very open. I wasn't very talkative. I would only talk like. If it came down to something important, or if people were asking me about my books, then I, yeah, I would talk. I would get excited about my story. I would talk about Jenny all day. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I wouldn't talk much. You know, I was still very quiet. I was still, um, one of those really, really quiet geeks. Nobody actually knew me. They just knew I was, or well, they thought I was a closet, closet freak, that's what they used to call me. You know, they always say it's the quiet one you gotta watch out for. And that, that was me in high school. Very quiet, very closeted, and very freaky. <laughs> you know, I wasn't doing shit. But <laughs> I had a million and one crushes. I had a million and one crushes in high school. I had so many crushes. I had a list of boys that I had crushes on because, again, I was very sexual in that time. I'm being molested. I'm looking for love in any place I could possibly fucking get it. <laughs> you know, so I had many, many crushes. I had a list. I wrote them down in this diary because I had a diary I used to write in every day. It was a notebook I used to write whatever school adventures. I used to write the name of the guy that I was supposedly in love with, the little short one. I used to write his name everywhere. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew I was in love with him and they would tease me for it. And people would push me on like, rah rah, go get him. He'll get you one day. Never happened. <laughs> um, yeah, stuff like that. I had a little weird adventurous type high school life but yeah my books <laughs> helped get me there because that would not have happened if i was not who i was at the time and the clothes helped and everything else so that, that's that's my jenny story right now and the end of it is clear the reason why i stopped writing it is because y'all remember the story at the end my mom was first realizing she found all my Jenny stories and she threw them in the dog on trash can. She threw them in the trash can because she didn't understand me at the time. She didn't want to understand me. She barely even talked to me about it. It was just, these got a girl. She tried spanking me when I was 17 years old. Who spanks a 17 year old? Like, no. <laughs> she took them and threw them in the trash and I was devastated. That was my whole life going down the toilet. That was all my Jenny stories combined, like fucking probably 10 notebooks. I don't know. All gone in the trash and I never got them back I, I'm very upset I'm still upset about that shit that was my life yo that was my life those stories were my life and from that day on I've been kind of severed it was like something was severed that day yeah something was greatly severed that day but it's okay. It's all good. My past does not hold me back anymore. I'm not bound by anything that happened in the past anymore. 
all the trauma I'm trying to, still trying to work through it, still trying to work through the fact that I couldn't be myself, my mom didn't like me being myself, she wanted me to write like her, she didn't want me to write erotica, she thought it was just devil's work, and she was a Christian fiction author, so she wanted me to write Christian fiction just like she was doing, and I said hell no, by then I'm way turned off by God, I'm way turned off by religion, period, so there was no fucking way I was going to, um, write like her. I tried. It wasn't, it was not me. <laughs> I like writing erotica. That's my thing. I like writing about sex. Like I said, even before I was, um, even having sex, I was writing about sex. But yeah, that's what I'm good at. That's what I'm really good at. And I need to go back to it. Cause you never know, y'all. Like some people just, they write and they blow up. I mean, I don't know if I blow up at this point in life, you know, doesn't matter if I blow up. I just want to get it out there for once. I want to finally write how I want to write and get my story out there. This Jenny story has been living with me for how long? Jenny is still in my head, y'all. Not all the time, but she's still there. I still think about Jenny a lot. You know, Jenny is me. The other side of me, you know. A ghetto, rich, spoiled brat who fucks any guy she wants. So, yeah. I'm putting myself on a path to go back to that, you know, without it being tied to any bad memories. That's, that's another reason I put it down for so long because it was tied to so many bad memories. But I'm erasing that, y'all. You have the power to erase anything you want to erase from your past. You can erase, you can un not erase, you can unlink things. You can unlink the pain that you went through with something that you love doing and put some happiness to it. You can do that. It takes some time and some work, but you can. Anybody can. If there's something you really, really like to do and it's linked to some bad memories, you can work on unlinking it. There is such a thing, you know? You don't have to be susceptible to saying, oh, well, I only did this when I was sad, or, you know, this, is came, from my, this came from my past, so I shouldn't do it anymore. Maybe it's still a part of you, you know? And that's what I had to grasp. This Jenny story is still a part of me. I still love writing erotic. I still love writing about sex. I have so many sexual feelings that I can't get out anywhere else, any way else. And writing it helps. I miss writing it. That shit does help, you know? When I'm not able to actually express it in my bedroom, I can express it on paper, you know? <laughs> I gotta do it some kind of way. Plus, you know, I don't have a girlfriend yet, so I gotta express my sexuality somewhere, you know, and I really miss doing it in my Jenny books. They were funny, they were awesome, they were sexual, they were, you know, everything. They were everything to me. Jenny is everything to me. So, yeah. I think I'm done rambling now. I didn't say all I needed to say. <laughs> if you have any questions, you know what to do. Write them in the comment box. Make sure you like this video. Don't forget to like it. I want to see a bunch of likes on this video, but I really do. Um, yeah, so I just like to start writing this. I'll let you guys know, and you guys will be the first to know if I do write and start publishing this thing again, you know? I really miss Jenny, so we'll see. You know, whenever I can find the time, that is. So, yeah. Make sure you like this video. I hope you guys are having a great day, second hour, month, minute. Thank you for watching.